Hey, welcome back YouTube. So it's been an interesting night at work. I'm on my way out right now and realizing I don't know exactly what time it is. Got to check another phone to see that. 11.53 p.m. Still Monday, November 27th, 2023. Uh, I'm going through the scary gate. Oh, oh shit, I forgot to grab my recycling. Yeah, there's not enough there to warrant the walk back. It's quite a bit of backtracking from where I am right now. And I just kind of forgot about it. Not worth the walk at this point. Maybe it'll still be there tomorrow. Maybe it won't. So I actually clocked out at 11.37. So in my attempt to get approved for overtime, things have been confusing and contradictory and misleading. And I feel like the overtime I should have got paid last week, I just straight up didn't get paid because somebody's thinking that I wasn't approved for it correctly. And perhaps I wasn't approved for it correctly, but I did already work it. And I did talk to Rob on Sunday. And I don't mean last week, like last week, which ended last Sunday, but last week, which ended the Sunday before, which I got paid for last Thursday-ish. That particular week when I went in, I knew that I had worked late on Monday and I think also on Tuesday. And so I told Rob that I was going to hit overtime because of that. And he said, no, nah, go ahead and work till the end of your schedule. You know, that would I need to leave when I hit 40 hours or... He's like, we'll go ahead and work to the end of your shift. So, like, I've already worked those hours. Like, if the, the problem was paying paying overtime, then he shouldn't have told me to work to the end of my shift. I wasn't going to get paid. Because I already told him I was over on the overtime hours. Anyway, I'm finding what I really need to do. And I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I haven't. Is get myself logged into the P.O. Please HR app. Those are the people that MLS outsources their payroll to. I need to get on that app and start scrutinizing my hours and make sure that they jive with when I'm clocking in and when I'm clocking out and when I'm actually there as well. It looks like they might be making mistakes or they might also be messing with my hours. I'm not sure. All I do know is that today during my shift, the early part of my shift when I was working with Keontae, he said that he didn't get paid for Tuesday and wanted to confirm with me that hey, wasn't Tuesday the day that Steve was here and that he was barfing? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, Tuesday was all about pretty much Steve's barf. It was like pretty much the most dominant thing of the day, at least at least for me and probably for you. And he's like, well, they, they got me down as not having worked. I'm like, no, you were definitely here. So that was the day we had pizza. That was the day Steve threw up and proceeded to tell him more about what it was like after he left because the, the second, second vomit episode after Keontae left was way worse than the first one. So knowing that he had an issue with his payroll, and I still have a day from like two months ago I didn't get paid for as well. And, and, and it may be too late to fix that. That just kind of is what it is, if, if, if it is. I mean, I should have been on that earlier, but yeah, I need to definitely follow up on, on that stuff. So anyway, knowing that, but knowing how much work I still had tonight at 10.30, when 10.30 rolled around, Part of me just wanted to clock out and leave. But I mean, I knew I still had a lot of work left. And as I was walking up to the break room, I saw Meyer, who's I think the probably the highest up Hertz manager this time of night. I saw him at the break room. So I asked him about it. I said, well, my, you know, I, I said, there's still a lot of stuff to do, but my shift is over. 
and there's been some confusion as to what I need to do to get approved for overtime. I said, because I'm able to work later, but I don't want it to be, a, be an issue with me getting paid or whatnot. He said, well, that's got to that's gotta be approved by MLS. He says, I don't, I don't approve your overtime. I said, yeah, well, I, I mean, I get that, but I was told that the MLS manager needs to get approval from the Hertz manager, which I'm assuming that would be you. And he goes, oh, he goes, well, yeah. He goes, I'll, I'll let Anthony know that, that, yeah, if you could stay an extra hour, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, I'll, I'll talk to Anthony about it. He goes, you probably need to talk to Anthony too. Anyway, I guess Bayard got a hold of Anthony before I did and told me, oh yeah, you're good, you're fine. So, fine for overtime for today. And I'll be honest, I took that as, oh man, I still didn't tear that thing off. I still got that thump, thump, thump going on in my car. And I still got like almost no gas as well. And it's, it's nearly, actually it's probably a little after midnight. Saturn clock still five minutes off.
piece of trim that broke. The, the... Holy shit, that's annoying. I get like completely forgot what I was talking about. Something about overtime, approval for overtime. Oh yeah, the Meyer said, yeah, he needs me. And I got a hold of, of uh, Anthony. Well, I guess shortly after, Anthony tried to call me back and I did not hear my phone ring. I hardly ever hear my phone ring. And a lot of times that's because things in my pocket bump the edge of my phone and turn the ringer off. So, um, he had texted and said that overtime was only approved until 10 or 11.30. Just go ahead and clock out. And, and I didn't see the text message until probably about, like, I'm not sure what time he sent it. I think it was not long after I, I got off the phone with him. It was probably about 10.45-ish. 40, and, but yeah, I didn't see it until probably about 11.20. And I just, I just, I think I just texted back at that time, okay, thanks. But yeah, the second message said, go ahead and clock, clock out. I'm not sure if it said, go ahead and clock out now. It said, go, or, I don't know, it was a little bit contradicting. Because the one text message, they were both sent at the same time. This is what they look like. These are the text messages here. Screenshot. Um, the one, you know, saying close, to clock out at, I'm um, approved till 11.30. Only till 11.30. And the other one was like, clock out now, but I mean, now is kind of assuming I'm seeing it now. It was damn near 11.30 by the time I actually saw it, because I, I'm not always looking at my cell phone when I'm working. In fact, you know, for the most part, unless I'm doing my little vlog videos between cars, I, I hardly look at my cell phone at all. Hopefully it's not going to be a problem, but I was really hoping they just approved me as, as long as there was still work to do. The Meyer did tell me to focus on getting everything that was scattered in the uh, purse return area into the maintenance line along where the overflow cars are right now that are blocking the maintenance fault, which I did. I mean, that's the first thing I did. Got that done pretty quick. But of course, I'm, I'm still, you know, working on the gatekeeper and keeping that clear. And... Oh, dang. Truck's unloading here. No, I'm not trying to park anyway. I'm trying to get gas. Until I break from my regular routine, things throw me off. Oh, and of course, pump out of service. Welcome to Circle K. into this pump. This guy's got his doors open. Kinda. This is so weird. Alright, I'm, I'm getting gas. I made it. Yay. Oh shit, I just remembered I didn't take care of the thing that was doing the thumping. I'm going to take care of that right now because that shit was driving me nuts. I'm just going to shut off my car because there's a lot of sketchy people here right now.
guys asking me if they're closed. I mean, the door's wide open. And I didn't go in the store. I paid at the pump. You know, I think I'm supposed to get Circle K some kind of a discount through my Circle K Rewards program, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to do it with the pump here. And it might be different because this is a Shell Circle K as opposed to a Circle K that has Circle K gas. Circle K with Shell gas. Anyway, I want to pay for gas today. The receipt printer worked. That's nice. Welcome to Circle K Shell. 4483 East Van Buren Street. I put in 3.74 gallons. Okay, 329 a gallon. $12.34. One, two, three, four. When I see stuff like that on my debit, I'm just like, yeah, that's that's a number I would have pumped. I'm not topping off at this price. I, I'll wait till I can get to Costco and top off. I still need to check out what's up with my Costco card because last time I tried to swipe it, it got declined. So this is what was doing all the thumping. This is the part of the weather stripping from the passenger side back door um and to give you some perspective that's that was going across the top and then that's where it goes down and i think that part the way it's folded is probably just because it was worn it was going into the the door but then that was the piece that would go down the back of the door pretty much from the top of the door to the bottom so it's kind of it's not very tall the bottom of the door because of the shape of the back door and a saturn ion but yeah it's completely detached along that edge there to there so that was hanging and that piece was just flapping in the wing thumping on the roof and whatnot um i just hope that by cutting that off and thank god i had my little razor blade knife on me actually not even my razor blade knife i got another one today from barry i don't know what the hell i did with mine it's just notice it was missing today um and somewhere during the shift, I lost my good white paint pen. This is extra frustrating. but Because I lost the pink one like a week ago. Now, I found another pink one a few days ago, but it seems like it's running out of paint towards the end of my shift tonight. So, about to have a paint pen crisis. And that knife that Barry gave me today has a super dull-ass blade. Not that it's a problem to go in, you know, during the day and get a new blade from it. At the, at the shop but still um, it made cutting through this old piece of rubber kind of difficult because that blade is so dull but um, yeah I'm worried that since I cut that away I mean there's no fixing that there's no repair, repairing that you know it's those things you got to replace but that and that's so far down on the list of things that need replaced in this car and that it's, you know that's not happening anytime soon are my headlights even on yeah they're kind of on Certainly the headlight lens covers are a higher priority than that, but I'm just worried that now that the thumping is gone that and that little bit of weather stripping is gone, that now the thing is going to whistle because car doors that whistle like freak me out too. I haven't gotten any actual text messages back from Priscilla in a while. Uh, she was responding to the last couple things that I sent her, and that was several hours ago. But it was uh, with, like, not actual. Like, there's a way you can respond to somebody if you both have an iPhone where it's, like, putting a heart on a text message or laughing at a text message or whatever. So I'm getting those kind of responses. And I tried to do that with some somebody else that messaged me and I couldn't see how to do that, but it's possible they didn't have an iPhone and you could do that with people who have iPhones. So, at, at any rate, I got an iPhone. I don't know how to do that. I, I find that stuff kind of obnoxious, personally. Like, come on, use your words. Use your words. But... She had said that her plan, like she told me when she was getting off work, and it was, I'm not sure what time it was, it was well after I had got to work, and, and then I asked her what her plans were for after work, and they basically involved around doing some cleaning at home and going to bed, and, um, 
me joining her in bed was not part of the list of things on her agenda. I was hopeful, but I do think I made it really clear on Thursday night that if, if she wasn't wasn't down for adult playtime before going to sleep not to invite me into her bed so maybe she's not and that's why she didn't and that's fair that is kind of what I asked for anyway I'm gonna head home god it's already 12 20 but my gas gauge is a little under half and that's uh, I know that's way less than half a tank but that's one one thing that had me kind of stressed it's not stressing me now. And I ate pretty good. That's the other reason I was kind of late coming out. Because, I mean, I clocked I clocked out at 11.37. I was trying to get right out at 11.30. And then there was this stupid traffic jam right at the start of the Hertz checkout line. So sometimes late at night, they'll close it down to just one line one person checking cars out and I don't understand why Hertz customers can't see that there's a junction there and if they're lining up there that they need to leave that space open but yeah they were blocking the, the space in the wall between Hertz and Dollar and the last vehicle that I got since I got everything lined up on the Hertz side I thought I should after that focus on getting vehicles back from Dollar yeah. Driving a big old Ford pickup truck, big killing machine style truck, um, back, and sure as shit, like cars blocking, blocking the way. So I'm set, stuck there. There's nothing I can really do. I'm just kind of stuck until the idiot customers. I did kind of inch up on the guy, and maybe the oversized truck was intimidating a bit because. He did finally kind of inch forward and off to the left. That was why I was a little bit late clocking out. The reason I was so late leaving was that um, I brought two factor meals in with me. And there's really only time, and I'm really only hungry enough to eat one of them during my lunch break. But I don't have a microwave at home. And damned if I'm eating one of those cold. So um, I brought two with me. And I figured I would eat one in the break room before heading microwave there at work and eat it before heading home. So I did that. It was good. That's one I had already tried. It was the pork chili mac with um, know, some kind of vegetables. It's like a mixture of corn and broccoli and some kind of seasoning. Fortunately, not too much corn. I'm not a huge fan of corn, but just a little bit mixed in with the broccoli. It was, it was good. It was a good meal. The second one of those I've had. And, uh, yeah, I like those. I have yet to have a factor meal that I haven't liked. One of the YouTube channels I really like to watch, uh, Leto's Law. And if you've ever seen that, he's an attorney. I, I forget his full name. I know his last name is Leto. And I think he's in Illinois, if memory serves. And he's an experienced attorney, licensed attorney. And he just gives his take as an experienced attorney on different things in the news that have an, have an element of a question of law to them. It's not something I've talked about often on this vlog, to be honest, but, but, but those who know me well know that I've long since had a fascination with law. So, of course, that's right up my alley of things I like to watch. And the last video of his that I watched... And it was pretty recent, but watched it this morning or maybe last night. And what got me at the end was it was actually a sponsor video. Usually he does not have a sponsor. And his sponsor was Factor. And I think I left it, rather than leaving a comment about the rest of his video, I actually left a comment about, about Factor. Like, yeah, I just started working there and I will love their meals which is I'm not a sponsor I'm just saying it because I love their meals but anyway on that note I'm home I'm ready to go in already uh already ate another 
decent meal, so uh, not even hungry or nothing. And I'm not tired either. I would have loved to have worked another hour or even another half hour. I'm going to go in and I've got, I, I haven't posted a chapter of my vlog in a couple of days, so I think I should finish the chapter I've been editing for the last couple of days, get it posted, and then I think I'm going to set up my computer, I don't know, bury myself on my music, do something. I'm not ready really to go to bed yet. As soon as I walked in, I remembered the other thing I was stressing about on the way to work today, other than the thump, thump, thump. I didn't notice any whistling in the car driving here from Circle K. And the thump, thump, thump was gone. So, so far, so good with that. So maybe the regular weather stripping is going to be adequate. Of course, the next question is, you know, it holds out noise. Does it hold out rain? <laughs> is that door going to leak now when uh, when it's wet? I don't know. I guess we'll find out the next day I drive in the rain. Anyway, the other thing that was stressing me out was, holy shit, where is my hat? Well, it's uh, it's right there on my washing machine. So sleep easy at night knowing that I didn't leave it outside or otherwise lose it. And I mentioned a while, I mean, maybe last week, the week before, that I found a pretty cool uh, black beanie that was a brand name, but with, with an H in the logo, and I couldn't remember what that logo stands for. I still can't remember what that logo stands for, but here's the hat. It's a pretty nice hat. Might be cold enough soon for me to want to wear something like that. 